I've been working the last few months on a custom Doctor Who intro sequence, and it's definitely a popular project in the Whovian community. Today I'll be updating an old tutorial by Thomas James Thornton on how to make a time vortex. I'll be heavily borrowing from his work and words, so please be sure to check out his original video and give him a shout out, because without him, this tutorial would not exist. In a future tutorial, I'll try and show how to model a TARDIS in Blender, a free 3D modeling program, and I'll even show off some of the more unorthodox tricks I've developed along the way. This is by no means THE way of doing things. Some of you more experienced VFX artists might even screech a little at what I'm doing, but in the end, as long as you get the results you want, it really doesn't matter. Lastly, for all those of you who keep bugging me and others online for freebies, learning how to do these things yourself is so much more beneficial, and you'll get the bonus pleasure of saying that everything was made from scratch. Yes, it's tough, but nothing worth doing is easy. So with that in mind, let's get started. For this tutorial, you'll need Adobe After Effects and Red Giant's Trap Code Particular. I'll place a link in the description. First, open up After Effects, create a new composition, and choose your settings. I'll be naming mine Vortex, but this isn't important for the moment. I want to render my final product in 1080p at 29.97 frames per second, so I'll choose the HDTV 1080 29.97 preset. Once that's done, hit OK. Before going any further, I want to explain what we'll be doing in a nutshell. We know that the time vortex is cylindrical in shape, but is also wibbly wobbly. The way we'll be achieving this effect is by using animated rings that will follow a generated path. Imagine drawing a curved line on the ground and then placing hula hoops upright along it. If you put enough hoops, you get a nice cylindrical shape. Then, we'll animate a camera along that path, much like if you were to then enter your new hula hoop vortex and crawl to the other side. The first step is thus creating our rings. Let's create a new comp and make the dimensions square. The bigger the size, the higher the resolution of the final vortex, but the more processing power will be required. Be sure to keep in mind the resolution of your final project. I'm going with 720 by 720 pixels because I'm rendering at 1080p. Also, be sure to set the time of this comp to be longer than the vortex comp. In your new composition, create a solid and make it black. Next, go into Effect, Noise and Grain, and select Fractal Noise. This generates clouds which will be the base. In the Effects panel, change the Fractal Type to Dynamic Twist. Set your contrast to 300, lower the brightness down to negative 40, and bring up the complexity to 8. As a final adjustment, go into Transform and set the scale to 165%. All of the values and changes I've suggested can be played around with, and I highly encourage you to do so. Now let's create the shape of our rings. Grab the circular mask tool and make a circle. Adjust the positioning if need be. Go into the mask settings to give it a feather and decrease the expansion. Then duplicate the mask, set it to subtract, and decrease the expansion even further. You should be left with a ring shape. Finally, let's animate the fractal noise. In the effects panel, alt-click on the evolution stopwatch. This will allow you to write an expression. Type in time times 500. To add color to your ring, select effect, generate, for color gradient. The reason why we are using this and not a simple hue saturation is because we have more control this way and the results will be more dynamic. Select each of your colors. I'm personally in the mood for a red vortex, so I'll select some reds, oranges, and purples. Once that's done, alt click each color stopwatch and enter the following expression. Wiggle, open parentheses, 0.1, comma, 0.5, close parentheses. This will result in a color shift over time. The first number corresponds to the frequency of these shifts, and the second number corresponds to the range of these shifts. Once again, be sure to play around with these settings. Now, set your blending mode to color dodge. This is an optional but recommended additional effect. Go into Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and select CC Vector Blur. By controlling the amount of the blur, you can make your vortex look like it's made out of electric current. Now duplicate this comp. As you may have noticed, I didn't call her second composition ring. This is because one of the things that helps sell the time vortex effect is layering. 
and each layer will have a different consistency for lack of a better term. The ring we just created will give us the look of plasma, hence the name. In the next few minutes, we'll be creating those cylinders alluded to in the beginning, and blending them together. Thus, you can name the duplicate comp ring for now. Go into this comp and change the fractal type from dynamic twist to string. As well, change the noise type to spline. Increase the brightness and scale up a bit. Don't worry, these can be modified once your cylinders are created. Because this new ring will be complementary to the plasma, play around with the colors. In my case, I'll pick random colors. You can also adjust the expressions so that the colors change at different frequencies. I'm going to change the range to 1. This is where the fun part comes in. However, it might sound confusing, but be sure to listen closely. Go back into your vortex comp and place both your ring and plasma comps within the scene. Make these invisible. Trapcode Particular will need to reference these in a second, and that's why they need to be imported into the scene, but we don't need the original comps to be visible. You'll understand why in just a minute. Create a null object and check the 3D layer option. If it's not visible, hit the Toggle Switches Modes button at the bottom of the screen. In the null layer, click on the Position stopwatch and enter the expression Wiggle open parentheses, 0 0.25 comma, zero, close parentheses. This expression animates the null object in 3D space, creating a path. However, the zero value we put for the wiggle range is temporary. Let's fix that. Create an adjustment layer and go into Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control. This will create a slider that will let us change values without having to edit expressions. While selecting the slider, you can hit Enter to rename it Wiggle. Set the slider to 625. Then, go back into your null position expression, highlight the zero, and pick whip it to the slider value. You'll notice that the expression has now changed. In a nutshell, it now states that the wiggle range is equal to the slider value. Duplicate the wiggle slider and rename it emitter. This second slider will control the amount of particles on screen. It's useful to have a slider because while making changes, you want to keep the number of particles as low as possible to conserve RAM. So for now, let's set it to 40. Next, create a black solid and place it under the null layer. Go into Effect, Trap Code, Particular. In your solid layer, under Effects, Particular, Emitter, you'll find the Particles Per Second Control. Select your adjustment layer to have access to the sliders in the Effects panel. Alt-click the particles per second stopwatch, and pick whip it to the emitter slider. Make sure that the expression field is highlighted before pick whipping. As mentioned before, what this does is make the number of particles on screen controlled by the slider. Next, alt-click the position XY stopwatch, and pick whip it to the null layer's position value. If you scroll across the timeline, you should now see a bunch of particles following the null. Set all of the velocity values under the emitter category to zero, and you should now get a straight line. Now go into the particle category and change the particle type to sprite. Go into texture and change the layer to plasma, and the time sampling to current frame freeze. You remember my hula hoop example? Well, there's one key point that I left out. Imagine a flipbook. Each image represents the next frame in an animation. Well, our time vortex works the exact same way. Each ring is the next image in an animation. Selecting current frame freeze establishes a sequence like a flipbook. Change the particle size to 100. Go into opacity over life and with your mouse draw a slope. This makes it so that the particles fade in. Set the opacity to 6% and then for the transfer mode choose screen. Now if we set our emitter slider to 350, we get a nice bright vortex. Go into Physics, Air, and set Wind Z to negative 1250. This will point the particles towards the camera. Finally, alt-click on the particle rotation Z rotation stopwatch and add the expression time times 30 to give a small rotation. Now let's create and animate a camera. 
go into Layer, New, Camera, and accept the default settings. Next, go into the Layer's Transform settings, alt-click the Point of Interest stopwatch, and type in the following expression. Do the same thing for the position, but instead, enter if ever you get any errors, be sure to check the expressions. In my test prior to making this tutorial, my null was named null2 instead of null1, so it threw off the expressions. If something's wrong, double check the names and make the necessary changes. The expressions are also case sensitive, so watch out for that. Now we have one vortex, and we can start layering. Duplicate the black solid, and in the effects panel under particle, texture, change the layer to ring. Then, set the blending mode for this layer to be either screen or add, depending on the look you're going for. For extra layers, simply create new rings, import them into the scene, make them invisible, duplicate your black solid, and change the layer texture to the new ring. Be creative. I know that this doesn't look too impressive at the moment, but by pre-composing everything and then adding color adjustments and effects such as vector blurs and glows, you can achieve fantastic and unique visuals. I stress this point because the whole purpose of a tutorial is to learn new techniques, and now it's your job to be curious and use these new tools to explore. With a bit of patience and imagination, you could come up with something like this. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to check the description for more details and updates. I'll also be posting an FAQ section. So before asking any questions, be sure to check and see if I haven't answered them already. Thanks for watching, and I'll be posting the next tutorial as soon as possible. Take care.